And Harshit, I hope you had seen that I had uploaded the recordings for previous sessions. This is the 8th of June. It's Git Credentials Binding, the first mentoring session. Now that recoding has started. And I've got some notes for, I didn't have anything on today's list of topics. What topics would you like to put on it? I'm gonna start sharing my screen and we can, we can capture those notes. Okay, Harshit, what, what would you like as first topic and anything in particular? Um, the first topic, I mean, I, I mean the first PR for for the coding phase. Okay, great. And and, are you ready to show it to us? Are we ready to talk about it? What would you? What would you? Or are there other topics I should put on the list as well? That's that's great. Yeah, uh, the PR, I will make a PR by today. Uh, I was just working on it. Uh, so I will make it by today. And I have, uh, should I provide some test cases as well? Yes, absolutely. If you can provide test cases, if, if you're not ready to provide test cases, code that others could test interactively is also good. Okay. I mean, these changes are to be merged in the master branch of the Git client plugin, right? Eventually, yes, that's correct. Hmm. Yeah, so, so I guess to answer your question, if you submit code that has no test cases, someone else will likely test it interactively, give you feedback on their interactive test results and then tell you now you need to write automated tests. But the, the interactive testing is good even if even if you haven't yet created interactive if you, even if you haven't created automated tests yet, interactive testing is still very valuable. Okay. Um, also, I just want to, uh, I mean, there was uh, like, uh, we have to set up the regular meeting, meeting day or, and the meeting schedule. Good, right. Schedule regular meetings during coding phase, right. And currently we've got Tuesday, um, but we don't have any other day scheduled. Okay. And do you have a do you have a preferred? So it's currently we got, and now this is is this time okay for you and for, and for Rishab the Tuesday at, eight thirty a.m. India Standard Time. Mm, yes. And Rishab, you're sure it's okay for you with your work schedule? Uh, I would have preferred eight to nine. If so, I have to start working by nine or nine thirty, usually. So, um, uh, if 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 it's uh, negotiable, then yeah, it would be great. But I I can manage eight thirty. So, uh, any objection from you? Harshit, if we were to shift it to, to be 8 a.m. India Standard Time? Mm, I mean, we can fall back to 7.30 then. Yeah, I was trying to be merciful to, to Rishab's early morning <laughs> wake up time. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we can keep 7.30 as well. <laughs> I'll, I'll wake up at 7. It's okay. If, if that's okay with Harshit, if you like the 7.30 time, then it's okay. I can wait up at that time. Okay, so 7.30. Yeah, so that's an hour before now then. Right, exactly. 
And now that, that creates a potential conflict with the documentation office hours for Tuesday, but I think we can find a way around it. We could ask to reschedule documentation office hours or use a different Zoom account. So we used to have these on Wednesday, right? That, that was a regular uh, meeting. That, that, that is correct. And, and we could shift them to Wednesday as well. That would, that would be another alternative. Uh, we were doing this today because um, because we wanted you to be in the meeting, right? This was uh, today shifted from Wednesday to Tuesday so that uh, um, there was a clash, I think, in your uh, schedule. And, and that is that is correct. So if Wednesday, 7.30 a.m. India Standard Time works for everybody, that's great for me is that would be that's the time we did it before. How is that for you, Justin? Is that a workable time for you? So Tuesday yeah, so. evening, 7 p.m. your time. I think right right now. What time is it right now? Your time? It's 8 yeah, p.m. It's your time. Now. Yep. Yeah, 7 30 works for or I guess that'd be seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember, they're half, they're they're eleven and a half or twelve and a half hours off from you. Yeah. So okay. So Wednesday at 7 30 a.m. India Standard Time. Do we want to do a second session each week? like we did last year? And if so, when should the second session be? So, um, yeah, for previous uh, GSOC 2020, we kept it Wednesday and Friday, Tuesday and Friday, I don't exactly remember, but yeah, we used to keep two sessions, but I think it's uh, entirely dependent on the student. Say if you have enough questions that uh, you would like to ask within a week, then we can have two sessions. But if you think that one session is enough for your development, then you know, I am personally confident with one session as well. So, Harshit, what would you like? Do you have, based on your experience during community bonding and the development time, one session a week or two? Um, I mean, for now, I guess one session is fine but in future i can switch to two sessions if i i think absolutely I, I assume that if you if you just say the word yes i would like a second session a second session can be scheduled very quickly okay. yeah i mean it's up to you version however you like it Great. So, and Justin, um, Mark to share credentials with Justin. I got permission to do that. So I just need to send those to you. I'll send them by email or by something a little more secure than email. Okay, awesome. Yeah, anything works for me. Great. I have like LastPass accounts and I can open up whatever else if there's something else. Ah, very good. And uh, if, you've, if you've got a LastPass, that's, I, I have ways to do a one-time sharing through other, other things. So this, this will be easy. I'll just send it to you. Great. Sweet. Okay. So anything else we need to discuss today. So Harshit, you mentioned that you're going to some, you know what, I guess one topic I had was we'll, we'll need documentation included as well eventually. Have you given any thought to yeah. how to document it? Mm, yeah, so I submitted a, a little, a little, very little minute change in the project idea. So I also, I had a, a hand of few questions about the documentation. So, Mark, can, can you share, should I or can you share the project proposal? Sure, here, let's see. So you, we want to look at the project proposal on the Jenkins IO site, or is it, are you looking at it at somewhere else? Oh, Jenkins IO site. 
Okay, great. So let's go here and nope, not that one. Sorry. 2021 GSOC subproject. Here we are. Okay, good. And is that visible to everyone? Or no, am I on the wrong page? No, this is the one. Okay, good. All right. So Yeah, so I wanted to know that uh, the implementation examples, these this heading has to be changed to implementations of the bindings. Or these have these are to be kept. Oh no, you can choose, you should choose, choose much better. And if you've got a better name for them, you are welcome to choose the better name. Absolutely. This was just this was just the idea is, is what you're asking is, do you have to use this name and this name kind of thing? Is that what you're asking? Mm, yeah. And the heading no. as well. your, your choices were much better. The ones we've reviewed that we've discussed much, much better. Okay. Also the new, uh, there's newly friendly issues. I think these, this can be removed now. Uh, Maybe friendly issues. Yeah, uh, where, is, where do I have that even in this? There. Yeah, I don't even see a friendly issues on this page. Yes, it it this is this is now the page that describes describes oh. your project, and so you don't need to mention friendly issues here for sure. Oh, I'm looking at the one thing I can open. Here, should I just stop sharing and we can let you share your screen? Okay. Mark, when you were uh, referring to documentation, did you mean uh, the plugin documentation? I, I okay. did, yes. Oh, so I was looking at this. I, I think this is wrong. So this is about the project ID. I was looking at that. So it has new newbie friendly issues. Ah, uh, right. And so, so the 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 idea is the one the one i think you want to modify is the the actual page under the project mm, oh. yeah yep and there's actually a to-do in there um for the office hours right right and we if should wanna... we should have you update that as well yeah if you don't mind that'd be amazing <laughs> Um, and actually, you might even, if you want to take a look at previous years, I think they keep those projects up. Um, so you can see how they've formatted that, like as time goes on, if that makes sense. A great idea. But we'll work with you on it too. So, yeah. yeah so, Justin, maybe we could offer a a, a sample of the layout that has worked well from past years. Let's go find a uh, one or more. Let's see. So if we were to look at previous years, 2020, there was this student, he was a little bit of a problem last year, but he did really good work. We liked you a lot, Richard. He was really mean to me. <laughs> he was mean to you. That's yeah. right. He I was don't know what mean. I did to him, but he, he was, was very mean to Justin. That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here's oh, maybe the opposite. <laughs> here's here's an example. I'm gonna paste into the chat. Uh, if if it helps you. So uh, is an example of the final structure of last year's page. Yeah, and you'll see that in Git too. You'll see it kind of like in that same structure. Right, yeah, where it shows, now we'll only have two evaluation phases, not three, but but it's the same kind of concept. Oh, oh should I stop, stop staying? No, no, you can you can keep sharing. Just click that hyperlink and and we'll look at, we can look at it all together.
So here you see details. And you would put in your, you put in the correct details and, and they're already there in the page, in the 2021 page, basically. Background. And then, yeah, we could do, we could have the section on deliverables. Certainly we've identified, right, that there is a username, password, pull request and a release of the get client plugin for it a passphrase based and a release and possibly, or, and hopefully a, a passphrase protected private key and a release. So this goes through the, those various pieces. And then as you go further down the page, it will get you into links to steps that have happened later on. So performance enhancement was a later step there we go, evaluation phase one. And that's that's coding phase one, basically. Isn't that what that represented for us, Rishab? Yes. Was, this yes, was coding phase one. So what we're starting now and we'll run for, what is it? Do we have four weeks in coding phase one or six? Uh, so yeah, Harshit, I think for uh, your project, you could maybe, um, uh, as as of this moment, maybe you could have a design. Uh, I would say if you don't have a design document, if you have, let's say, the architecture or the design for your uh, this class, the first binding you're making, uh, having that representation on the page would be able to, because I think uh, personally that people it, it's easier for people to relate uh, when they're looking at a blog and they they see a uh, that's the first thing they see. When they're because I think in your case you're going to go uh, you're going to explain your implementation that is how you're going to explain your project and um, that's a lot of code so I think the best way to represent it would be first to give a design uh, to give a picture in any form like a UML diagram uh, however you want to represent your class or your implementation and then go with explaining that implementation yeah. We have 10 weeks of coding. That great, two, two five August weeks. 16th. Yeah, so two five week sequences, right? Yeah. Excellent, okay. So, so the idea there is, but, I guess harsh it back to the the compelling value is the code that you're creating. This is great documentation. I'm not sure we want to derail your creating that first pull request in order to update this documentation. Yes, you need to do the documentation here, absolutely. But getting that first pull request in seems seems very very valuable. Yeah, you can follow up, I think, with the documentation. It'll be good to get that stuff all up to date for sure. But if you're kind of like ready and it's in your brain. Right. Yeah, we have first evaluation July 12th. And I will drop offline beginning Wednesday. Uh, so Justin, you and Rishab are in the lead. Much pressure. <laughs> yeah, <that> sounds scary. <laughs> How do we live up to Mark's standards? Exactly. That's right. Because they are such <laughs> awesome standards. Awesome. They are. We're gonna miss you, man. Well, thank you for oh, thank true. you for being willing to go forward. So uh, I had another topic. If um, if you're just if you're adding another topic uh, to the discussion list for today, it was related to SSH 
um, private keys with and without passphrase. So decryption of them. So yeah. Yeah, let's so let's put it there. So Ma, I should stop sharing and you can share now. That sounds great. Yeah, so then SSH decryption and and I've been a little bit ill recently. Justin, would it be okay if I made you the host and ran the risk that I might end up having to disconnect? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to try some magic. So just a minute, let's see if I can do it. Magic. I am now going to make you the host, change the host to Justin. Okay, so Justin, you should be the host, so you should be able to do more stuff. Uh oh. All right. And is there, oh, and it is still recording. Good. Okay. So now, Rishab, you had a, you had a comment on SSH decryption as a, an additional topic. Yes, yes. Do you want to share your screen with the notes on it? And that way we can have you talk us through what you've learned and take notes as you do it. Sure. If you want to start with that, if you're yeah, so that, then, yeah. Okay. I, th I think we're ready. Unless, Harshit, you have some other topic, I think we'd be ready to switch to, to Rishab's topic. Mm, yeah. Yeah, my, uh, my Mac does not have permissions to hold on to Zoom, so I could either leave and come back or... <laughs> Uh-oh, um, what does that mean? So you, you, I've made you host, but you can't can't stay as host or... Um, so I can stay as host, but I just can't share my screen just because my Mac hasn't given Zoom privileges yet. Oh, I okay. The app. I see. You don't have yeah. to, but we don't need you to share. Rishab can no. share and, okay, yeah. great. Okay, All right, so, so uh, I see it. Yeah, so, so last time we were discussing uh, on a possibility of um, uh, decrypting the OpenSSH <clears throat> private keys with bouncy castle APIs. And um, uh, if you, uh, so Justin, uh, you were not there, but basically what we found was that there were, uh, there are specs which uh, bouncy castle has created, which kind of gave us a hint. This this is a spec which they created uh, for the open SSH for uh, the new format. So this kind of gave us a hint that there is a possibility, uh, an area where, uh, we could so bouncy castle could provide us the uh, ability to decrypt those keys um, so so i was trying that i was I, I basically what i tried was that i created some test keys um, i have pasted them here as well and i have them in my um, in another in another folder as well so they were uh, created with um, i i created three experiments one was um, basically SSH keygen without providing any algorithm, the default one. Uh, then it was with um, EV25519 and then with RSA. That's how I created three keys and uh, all of them were with and without passphrase as well to test bo both of them. So with the open SSH, um, uh, with Bouncy Castle, I was facing uh, weird issues First of all, what I could find out, find out was that with ED25519, so if I uh, have a private key, uh, I hope you all can see my screen. So I created a key called uh, this one, test ED255. Yeah, so this is pass uh, passphrase protected, and I have one without passphrase as well. This bouncy castle was able to pass, and I I was able to get the private key from the key factory, Java private uh, key implementation from um, the spec. That so I I could do that with this algorithm if the key was uh, created specifically with this algorithm. But I was facing an issue if the user was not uh, mentioning the algorithm. So let's say if the if the user creates a key like this, then it, it, it was not able to parse it. 
I was facing an issue with uh, the parsing logic of uh, OpenSSH private key. And I, can, I tried to find uh, reasons for it, but I could not. And uh, so one more thing I saw in their own, um, I actually have uh, their, I, I cloned their project as well. So I was, the, for, for me, I personally found out that the best way to look, how to use it was to look at the tests they have for uh, for these classes I'm trying to test uh, use actually. So, so what I'm sure about is that they've tested RSA here. So if you have a RSA private key, this can be read and decrypted using the bouncy castle APIs. If you have a DSA, that also can be done. If it's EC DSA, that also is covered here. And ED25519 is also covered here. But all of these keys are not passphrase protected because what I found out was, and let me go to the document as well, that uh, if any SSH key uh, is, uh, is is being passphrase protected by uh, the open SSH, uh, the SSH key gen, then it, it is encrypted with this format, with this algorithm. So, so what I could understand is that first we need to decrypt that and then get the private key and process it with the uh, with the open SSH utility that Bouncy Castle has provided. So with passphrase protected keys, that was what I saw. Like I tried for, for any algorithm I gave uh, in the open SSH format, it was not able to pass parse it. So that was the first thing I found out uh, with with this. Um, so it was it was yeah. always using AES two fifty six CTR as the cipher. Yes, that is what I saw with ED two five five one nine algorithm and with RSA. With both of them, if they are passphrase protected, this is what it said when it when it was trying to decrypt it. Like I, I was debugging the code and it was able to get this cipher out of the key, and it said and it does not support the cipher. And I can also show you um, in their in their implementation. In their implementation, basically, this is exactly this is the line where they try to um, uh, get the cipher from the private key. And if you can look here, they basically expect that this, there is no cipher. If there is a cipher, then it says encrypted keys are not supported. That's fun. Yeah. So, uh, so with Bouncy Castle, I uh, to be more clear, I was not able to pass any passphrase protected SSH key. But I was able to parse keys with this format without passphrase. With one issue that if the uh, algorithm is not uh, mentioned while creating the SSH key, that that is RSA by default. But but I am not sure why um, Bouncy Castle was creating an issue. Maybe I was doing something wrong. I'm not sure, but. There was definitely an issue. It was not able to parse it. It, it says that it, it gives me the same error. Encrypted keys are not supported. So I, I actually kind of uh, yeah, these were the formats I could parse um, uh, with the bouncy castle APIs. But then I, I uh, if there is no questions, I went ahead and I looked at a different library, and that was really interesting because um, that was SSJ. And to my understanding, SSJ is uh, a Java implementation of SSH, SCP, SFTP clients. So with, with that library, I was able to parse every, if it's a passphrase protected key or uh, without a passphrase, I, would, I was able to read them and I was able to generate a private key out of them. So I, I have a very bad, just this is the, this is basically the so so using. you yeah. just said something very bold there you okay yeah. if i ask again you said yes. that you with by using the sshj library you were able to read all of the private keys both passphrase protected and not passphrase protected did i understand yes. right well that's yes, great yes. so the the thing i did was that they have this um a utility called a open ssh key one file and you just need to initialize it with if it's a with, if it's a password protected, you need to give the passphrase, uh, the password. Um, and if it's not passphrase protected, then you just give the file where uh, your keys are, and then 
you initialize it and i i could get you can basically provide both the public and the private key and it keeps it like that and this is essentially used to create a ssh uh, connection so ssj will be used to create a ssh client something like this and this ssh client will use this file open ssh key one key file to uh, establish a connection with the server so i was able to get the java private key this is what we want right harshit as far as i know my my doubts then um, ke i i had a doubt then how do we consume this how do we want to use this because i was looking at git clients uh, implementation and the way they they're creating a file and they're using it so i was not entirely sure how how we're doing this to my understanding i thought that um, what we're basically doing is that we are letting git cli know that ssh has the keys and then they talk and they establish the connection is that how it happens mark that's how it happens as far as i know what we what i believe the git client does is it takes a file from the jenkins credential system and writes that file to the local disk on the agent and sets an environment variable that tells s command line git where to find that file we wrote to the local disk and that file we wrote to the local disk is the private key file now in the case where it's passphrase protected it does even more heroics mm -hmm. it writes the private key file and then it has to write a special response file that includes the mm -hmm. passphrase as well but i think you described it correctly rishab it is that we write the private key file to a, a mm -hmm. file on the agent and then we pass mm -hmm. an environment variable that tells command line git where to find that file okay so 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 then my question is that i i saw something else i'm sorry i was just looking at the code and i saw something which i uh, which is interesting um so there's the whoops command. you were you were right at it go back up okay create the passphrase file oh no further up so this is this is all right so create the ssh key file on line 2812 that's that's okay given here's the ssh private key and it's being written as an open ssh private key file to that location yeah i i, I understand this uh, this step and then then we have to pass trace file if we have that and then in this step i saw that this is what i was looking at oh i'm sorry so this is basically a shell script it, it's trying to uh, this is what it will run right correct so this is this is the the machine trying to establish a connection with the key well what it is is this is a this is a shell script that's being written that will handle if i remember this will also handle the the where is it yeah there it is it will handle i think this one also handles the passphrase so my is, question do is I see it? Uh, i'm sorry go ahead i was just saying that ssh hyphen i that, that this means that we are trying to establish a, a ssh connection with a private key right this is what we're trying to do here with this line correct okay so once we do this then git cli will be able to um essentially talk to ssh and get the that's 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 its responsibility to get the um to to get to, to access the private server wherever it is that's that's correct this is this is what i'd call in in the world of git this is the old way of doing things the new way of doing things is with git underscore ssh underscore command and but this old technique works with versions even as old as git 1.8 like on centos 7. so so but yes this technique that you i think you've expressed it correctly it's this is a shell script that's being written to the disk and then the name of that shell the path to that shell script is being pathed passed as the is it ssh ask pass or ssh there there is a or git underscore there is a, a specific environment variable that's 
that is used to inform command line git. Oh, there it is. It is yeah, right there. git SSH underscore SSH. SSH. Oh, yeah, there, yep. Yeah. Well, actually, I think the one that does the configure the SSH is git underscore SSH. And then SSH ask pass is for for the uh, the passphrase protected. Uh, I, yeah. I think so. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. So then my question is that um, can we not use a, a Java implement, a Java client for SSH? Why, uh, why do we, maybe that's, that's not really connected to, um, to our current issue, but then I think it's eventually connected to our issue that if we are creating a Java private key, how are we, how will we translate this to uh, the, uh, the shell SSH? So if we create the private key in Java, we need to write it to the disk using something roughly like create SSH key file on line 2012. We would take the Java representation of that private key and write it to disk on the agent so that then command line git can use that file on disk. Because this is basically just teeing up everything for command lines git to take over. Right. Understood. Okay, okay. So that means then then we need this private, we need to decode this private key. Because I as far as I understand the this is not decoded. I think we get the encoded um, that there has to be then we have to see how do we do that so i thought that this is this is the first step right that we get the private keys out of we we'll be able to read them and then we get the private keys but then how do we so since we we're, we're trying to write this into a file uh, okay so we would we would want the exact same content to be written in a file i think so yes yeah we don't have to do the decryption and then write that content to the file. Well, the, the thing we have to decrypt is if it's passphrase protected. Right, that because be internally done. Okay. So if if the we we don't we would like to avoid having to separately deliver the passphrase to command line git if we could. That would be the preferred thing so that if we if the user gave us a passphrase protected private key, we could if we could decrypt and remove the passphrase protection so that the thing we write to the disk has the passphrase removed, that would be the best because then then we don't have to do anything the the agent and the command line SSH doesn't have to do any prompting for passphrase. Did, did, was did, was that was I at all clear there, Rishab, or have I yeah, spoken yeah. poorly? No, no I, I think you, you. Yeah, that's what I need to understand. So that then that means that if I'm able to read this private key, so if I'm able to read the private key with passphrase, in this case, then and if I'm able to get the private key out of it, then that means that this uh, library is. Um, internally handling that. Uh, I haven't checked actually how it's doing that, but so so from what I understand with this library is that we just have to provide the the private key. If it's a passphrase provided, protected, then we provide that password uh, in terms of a char array, and uh, it basically gives us the private key and the public key out of it. And Essentially, we want to use that file to establish a SSH connection with their client. But, but I was concerned if it's it's going to give us the private key or not, or it's just going to be consumable for the SSH client in the SSJ library. But since it does give us the um, opportunity to get the private or the public key, then I think this should this should work for us. And that sounds wonderful. That sounds really great. So, so I think what you're saying is you you think you've found a way with SSHJ to read passphrase protected private keys, and to write back a private key 
for the same exact key that is no longer passphrase protected, or, or at least you think conceptually that should work. Yeah, conceptually. So, so I just need to know, I'm not sure if I, so if a key is passphrase protected, and uh, would I be able to get the private key out of it if it was not decrypted internally? And then let's say I would be able to see its encoding and the algorithm it has. That's I'm not, I, I think I have Well, to... you have to know, you certainly must know the passphrase, right? That's not, it's not that you can get the passphrase without knowing it. You have to know the passphrase in order to decrypt a passphrase protected private key. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So I have mentioned. So if you, this is a poorly uh, written way to actually pass the password. So basically, you have to create the password finder, and you have to pass the password as a carrot. And I, I created the passphrase as test. Okay. I'm able to pass that to uh, this file initialization with my uh, with my SSH key. So. Um, and in this case, uh, the interesting thing was that I tried it with uh, without giving any algorithm, then with uh, RSA and then with ED25519. Uh, and in their uh, uh, in their uh, documentation, in SSK's documentation, they, they do say that they support all of these formats for open SSH. Okay. Uh, Yes, I, I think this is the this is the this is what the new format is called for open SSH. Great. Yeah, and, and I was able to see that all of that can be decrypted. And I actually did those. So I think you said things. something interesting in the doc from last week. Because uh, you mentioned that the passphrase, I, I think that, that passphrase is salt. For encrypting with, like, I think in your example, it was AES 256, mm, uh, either CBC or CTR. Um, so yeah. I'm wondering if this library is just like trying, or either A, there's an encryption header that says, hey, I'm using this algorithm. Here, give me a passphrase and I'll decrypt. Uh, and then it's just doing that. And then you've got private key. I'm wondering if that's what's going on, if that makes sense. It, it does. That's what I'm assuming as well, that it is doing okay. that. It's not just reading the, uh, let me find if I can find that code. So it, it is doing something with a cipher that I did I see in the code, but I did not um, actually de you know, debug it line by line and understand what sure. it's trying to do. Yeah, yeah that's no problem. Hmm. So, so my assumption was if I'm able to get the private key out of it, if it's able to initialize it, a passphrase protected key, and it's giving giving me a private key. Because earlier when I was trying to use Bouncy Castle in this um, code, then I was not able to get generate the private key, even generate the private key. In this case, we and essentially this is what the key factory does. It it provides us with with an instance of a private key with the generate private method. This is what it tries to give us, and in this case, I would I was able to get that. So I, I I made an assumption that internally it is able to uh, decrypt this that cipher and then um, give us the private key, which is still encoded with the open SSH format. So I, I guess the next step would be to uh, just try to decode this into a, to write this into a file and then try to establish a SSH connection with the keys, I guess. That's that's how we would be sure that this would work uh, in the case of Git client. So I just want to um, just see what it is. So do we have, uh, do we have uh, other topics to discuss for this meeting? I'm sorry. If Ashit, do you have questions, doubts? Do you think this is a valid approach? Do you think you could work with this? Thank you.
Oh, I'm sorry, what did you get in the sun? Uh, Justin, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Harshit, did you have any uh, topics, other topics that you'd like to discuss? Or is this kind of helpful? No, this is working fine. Actually, I didn't get this sound for a few, for a few minutes, so I had to refresh my browser. Oh, okay. Can you hear us okay now? Um, yeah. Okay, great. Well, and, and we'll have a recording uploaded, Harshit, so you can review it later. Mm, yeah. Just so Harshit, maybe... I'm... Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, no Rishab, go ahead. Yeah. I was just saying that uh, I think Harshit, what we can definitely try is that we can, um, we can create uh, three sets or four sets of keys. I think an exhaustive list of whatever possible you can uh, algorithms and the ways people can create you know, to open this research uh, with this is a key gen and then use this library to read them, get the private key, and then write them into a file and then try to do what essentially we've tried but we're trying to do. I don't think it will be a difficult experiment. Because Actually, I have... looked into the code of uh, the open SSH key file, so hmm. provided by the SSH library, J library. So actually, they don't support a DSA algorithm. Okay. And, and I'm not aware of anybody using the DSA algorithm anymore. I thought it was long ago deprecated, retired, and and described as as weak. Let me but the, check. the SSH key gen can still generate uh, keys in the SSH algorithm, so I think it could be a concern. Ah, okay. So I can see SSH EV25519 here, SSH RSA. I tried both of them. I did not try any other encryption algorithm for uh, for this type of key as of now. So. Um, so I guess are the, the objective since in the last meeting I asked Ron what would be the benefit of using of doing this programmatically versus I mean with a Java native implementation and versus using uh, the launch command and there were clear benefits of using a library uh, within our uh, within the Java code. So if 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 we if we want to use the benefits and if we know that. The, 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 the formats which majority of users are going to use are supported and we're able to do what we want to, then uh, I don't think it should be a problem for us. And for the algorithms where we know it's not going to work, we can fall back to, um, to the, the conventional way. Probably you would have to write some sort of a, uh, uh, I would say utility which would, uh, which would have to understand the algorithm because in this case, um, with this um, uh, API, the open SSH v1 key file, you don't have to specify the algorithm. It is going to detect that on its own self. If you if you see that I have provided two files here, I'm sorry for the messy code, but this this one and this one should be one of them is RSA and one of them is ED255. And if you see in my console, I, I just wanted to print the um, algorithm from the private key, and it's it's going it's able to get that. From um, from the key itself, we don't have to worry about the algorithm. It is we have to uh, the key is using because in the case of bouncy castle, we we had to worry about the encryption algorithm as well because the key factory would be initialized only uh, if we want to generate a private key with the key factory implementation. Then we would have to know the algorithm by which the key was encrypted, and that is how we could generate a private key. In this case, that is not the um, that is not something we have to worry about, at least for the supported formats. Yeah, and that seems very promising. Right? Go ahead, Justin. Excuse me. Oh, there you go. Actually, I was saying that 
uh, the key factory like even if we know the algorithm mm. uh, i am not sure if we uh, using that uh, form i mean using the pouncy castle jenkins plugin even if we know the algorithm we are like sure that it will be decode it will be able to I understand your point, and I'm not. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't have to use Bouncy Castle. You can use SJ to do this. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But then, yeah, we definitely have to see that this works end to end. Because even if we are able to generate the private key, if we are not able to feed this to what the Git client is doing, then it it's of no use to us. So. That is an experiment we definitely have to do to be sure that this is going to work. So, um, yeah, that would be. I am not sure if uh, you would have the time to do it because you already have the PR and you have to work on, or maybe uh, so. So currently, with our schedule, how are we planning to do the? Uh, when are we planning to do the SSH keys binding? Are we are we thinking that we first? Oh, we we're going to the plan that first we're going to raise a PR for um, the username password binding, and then we push that to production, and then we think about SSH keys. That was what I had understood was that the goal was to try to get all the way to release with username password, hoping that it would be relatively quick. Okay. Viraj, okay. are you still you still okay with that idea? No, do I sorry, Harsh, should I use the wrong name? That's really embarrassing. And that was recorded too. I was just talking to Diraj Singh Joda about documentation an hour ago. So sorry, Harsh. Harshit, are you still okay with us with the concept that we release username password first before, before switching focus to SSH keys? Mm, yes. Okay, then I think um, you don't need to worry about this. I, uh, so oh, then no, we no. have enough time. You have, you have described a bunch of things that do need worrying, but not for the first mm -hmm. phase, right? It, yeah. it, it may be one week and Harshit's immediately on this, depending on how difficult the username mm -hmm. password work is. So I guess yeah, that we have enough uh, At this moment, it's not the time. So I, okay, so we, we first look in, into uh, getting that into production and the concern we have around them and then maybe by the time maybe i could run that experiment of it's, if it's something harshit would like to do harshit you know, maybe you can we're exploring um, like maybe, um, yeah i will definitely try it once i'm like sort of confident like the user credential banding is working as i predicted hmm. so i will definitely give it a try understood, understood. Okay. so I think that's that's it. That's what I want to do. This just is there anything else we will think about to discuss? Because we are, I think we are. I guess a administrative question for you, Mark, uh, regardless uh, regarding uh, dependencies. Uh, I think this looks like if we were to want to use SSHJ as a dependency, like it's Apache 2.0. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you have any procedural things you like to go through before taking on a dependency. No, if it's Apache, it's a good thing to check the license and include the proposed dependency in the pull request. I figured it was just that. But, uh. Yeah, I, 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 it's been a long time since I added a dependency, but certainly we added a much, much larger dependency than SSHJ when we added JGit, and and it's we've survived that experience. <laughs> Okay. 
Yeah, excellent work, Rishab. That is really great on the SSH decryption work. Yeah, I'll just note that too. Okay. Yeah, so you'd put the dependency in the palm.xml file and that would then, I believe, automatically include it inside the git client.hpi file or git client.jpi file. Yep. Any other topics in before we close? Let's see, we've got a schedule for, so Wednesday. So Justin, you'll do the scheduling of the Wednesday meetings? Yeah, and I could, um, I guess I can do this async too, but um, are you scheduling? I think you're scheduling through Google Meet and then just attaching a link to this that way, right? Or are you scheduling through Zoom? I've, I've been scheduling through Zoom. And if, if okay. Zoom's okay for you, Zoom has the benefit that it lets us record. Yep. I don't know that everybody gets to record on Google Meet. Yeah, I, no, uh, sorry. Uh, Google Calendar is what I meant. Sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. So, so I, and I'll, I'll point you to the meeting that I, I defined that's currently defined each week on a Tuesday. And all you'll need to do is redefine it to Wednesday. Yeah, you can just make the... Uh, collaborate or whatever right cool. all right perfect and then uh for recordings does this just kick out to like your email it doesn't you have to go download it from the zoom portal and upload it to the jenkins youtube channel okay i can ask about that i figure that yep. stuff out all right thanks everybody and Thanks. Justin, it actually won't stop recording until you leave the meeting as the uh, as the host. All right. Well, thank you all very much. Mark, good luck. You. Oh. I think Mark just dropped. Yep. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.